Okay, so in this video, we will consider two very simple examples of the subspace theorem. In both cases, we will consider a subset of R2, the xy plane. So here's our first example. And the question we're going to ask in each case is, is our set a subspace of R2, therefore a vector space in its own right? So consider R2 the xy plane. And again, you can think of R2 as the set uh, containing all tuples of real numbers or containing all column matrices of length 2. So all 2 by 1 column matrices. So this is R2. And here, let's say that we consider R2 as column matrices. So XY where x and y are allowed to be arbitrary real numbers. Okay, now consider a subset of R2, and I will take quite simply the line y equals 2x. And my question is very simple, clearly, L is a subset of R2, right? Every point on this line is a point in the xy plane. Therefore, L is a subset of R2. And we know R2 is a vector space, right? We know that Rn for any positive n is a vector space. And so R2 here will play the role of our larger vector space. And now that we have a subset of a known vector space, we can prove or decide whether or not L is a subspace of R2, therefore a vector space in its own right, living in the larger vector space that is R2, using the subspace theorem. Therefore, checking closure on their addition and closure on their scalar multiplication. We do not have to prove that axioms 3 to 10 also hold. But we'll actually do simpler in this case. If you remember the first corollary of the subspace theorem, it was to prove that the span of any vectors is always a vector space. So here's my question. Can we express the line given by the equation y equals 2x as the span of something? And the answer is yes. Right, so think of your space, the line. Well, it's a set of points, x, y in the plane, where x can be any real number, and y has to be 2 times x. That's our line. The set of points in the plane, x, y, where x can be any real number, but the y-coordinate has to be 2 times the x-coordinate. Well, if you think of it, we can replace here y by 2x. And x is again allowed to range over all possible real values. Well, we can factor from this vector x as a scalar multiple. We get x times the vector 1 and if you look at this now, you see that the vectors or points, right, you know that in R2 vectors are points and points are vectors, vice versa, are simply multiples of the vector 1, 2. And because x is allowed to range over all real numbers, the line consists of all possible real multiples of the vector 1, 2, this is by definition the span of vector 1, 2. So think of it. You can look at the vector x equals 1, y equals 2. Right, here's the vector. 
x equals 1, y equals 2. And it's clear, even geometrically, that the span of the vector 1, 2 gives you the entire line. Take 1 times this vector, you get this point. Take 2 times this vector, you get this point. Take 1.5 times the vector, you get this point. Take 1 half times this vector, you get this point. Take negative 1 times this vector, you get this point, and so forth. So geometrically, it's clear that as we take every possible scalar multiple of this vector, we will get every point on the line. And this is what we have just proved algebraically. The line, given by the equation y equals 2x, is a set of all possible scalar multiples of the vector 1, 2, and that is by definition the span of the vector 1, 2. But our first example of the subspace theorem was to prove that the span of any number of vectors in a vector space, well, this is a vector with two components, therefore in R2, and R2 is a vector space, and so we have the span here of one vector from a vector space, and therefore we know that this is automatically a vector space. And so the line, L being the span of vectors from a vector space, well actually in this case just one vector, L is a subspace of R2. So L is a vector space in its own right, so L is a vector space living in the larger vector space that is R2, the xy plane. And we're done. Let's ask now, what if we considered a vertical translation of this line? So instead of taking y equals 2x, let's take quite simply y equals 2x plus 1. Will this line still be a vector space? So same thing. R2 is once again our larger vector space. But now the subset of R2 that we take is y equals 2x plus 1. The question that we're asking is again, is this line a subspace of R2 or not? And again, R2, as we have said previously, you can think of R2 as the set of tuples of real numbers or as the set of 2 by 1 matrices. Okay, so let's try and prove that L is a subset, a subspace, I should say, of R2, right? Clearly, Every point on the line is a point in R2 in the plane, so we have a subset of R2. We can try to use the subspace theorem to decide whether or not L is a vector space. Well, we can do this quite simply, right? The answer is actually no, that this line is not a subspace of R2. Think of it. If you remember axiom number 5 of vector spaces, it was the existence of the zero element in your space. If you think of it quite simply, any vector space must contain a zero element. Well, what is the zero element in R2? It is quite simply the zero vector. It is the origin. And we have proved that if we have a space closed under scalar multiplication, automatically the space must contain the zero vector. And we ask quite simply here, is the zero vector an element from L? And the answer is obvious from the graph of the function. The origin is not a point on the line. But we know that every vector space must contain the zero element. Well, because the zero element does not belong to the line, L is not a subspace of R2, and we're done.
So always keep this in mind, right? Because if L were a vector space, it would be closed under scalar multiplication. So you could multiply any vector by zero, and it would have to still be a vector in your space. But any vector times zero is the zero vector. So the zero vector, if your space is to be closed under scalar multiplication, has to be an element from your space. Obviously here the zero vector is not an element of our space, and so L cannot be a subspace of R2. So that is a violation of closure under scalar multiplication. Think of it this way. Clearly, take the value x equals, say, 0, then y will be equal to 1. So clearly, the vector x equals 0, y equals 1 belongs to the line, right? x equals 0, y equals 1. So as a point or as a vector, this is on the line. And clearly, 0 is a real number. So we have here a vector in our space, a real number, but well, let's see. We will multiply the vector by the zero real number, so we do zero, times the vector zero one, which is the vector zero zero. And as we have said, this does not belong to the line. So what does that prove? We took a vector in our space, we took the real number zero, and we multiplied the vector by the real number zero, and the new vector is no longer in L. It's actually outside of L. And so our space is not closed under scalar multiplication. And of course, as soon as one axiom is not satisfied, the set is not a vector space. Therefore, L is not a subspace of R2. So this is kind of the long-winded explanation as to why this was justified. If a set is closed under scalar multiplication, the space must contain the zero vector, because any vector in your space times the zero real number is the zero vector. And so if the zero vector is not an element of the space, this space is not closed under scalar multiplication, therefore it is not, in our case, a subspace of R2. And now we're done, but let's just, for the fun of it, let's show that this set is also not even closed under addition. What is closure under addition? It says take two elements of your space. If you add them up, the resulting element should still be an element of your space. So let's take two points on this line. Well, we have taken the vector 0, 1, which we know is on the line. And what if x is 1? Well, if x is 1, we'll have the point x equals 1, y equals 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3. Therefore, the point 1, 3. So both of these are elements of this space. Let's see if we add them up if the vector we have is still in our space L. Right? So let's do 0, 1 plus the vector 1, 3. And we have as a resulting vector the vector 1, 4. But if you think of it, the only vectors in our space L are the ones where the y-coordinate of our vector is 2 times the x-coordinate plus 1. So let's see. If this were a vector in our space, y would have to be equal to 2x plus 1. Well, let's see if that's true. y here is 4. 2 times x is 2 times 1, 
plus 1. This is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And so this is not equal to 4. And so you see, the point zero 1 is a point on our line. The point 1, 3 is a point on our line. And yet, if we add those two points up, those two vectors, we have a new vector, 1, 4. And because y is not 2x plus 1, this point is not a point on the line. So the vector 1, 4 is not on the line. And look what that gives us. We took two vectors in our space L, we've added them up and obtained a vector that is no longer in the space L. And so our space is not closed under addition. So in this case, both closure axioms failed. Now keep in mind, I only showed you that both failed, just to give you an example of how you would construct a counterexample to prove that you have failure and closure under scalar multiplication, and an example where you had failure and closure under addition. Keep in mind, whenever you are trying to prove that something is a vector space, using the subspace theorem, as, as soon as one axiom breaks down, is not satisfied, you can stop. Automatically what you have is not a subspace of the larger vector space. And here it was quite dramatic because L was at the same time not closed under scalar multiplication and not closed under addition. But keep in mind again, as soon as one axiom is not satisfied, you do not have a vector space.